In this video, we're going to uh, continue our conversations about KMAP and start using KMAP to actually minimize a function. Let's go ahead and start with the relatively simple function. So the functions come to us because uh, someone gives us a problem statement to design a system and we end up with an expression. So, so if we want to kind of uh, itemize uh, how we get uh, to a function is if somebody could give us a statement of a problem that they want us to solve. For example, uh, they want us to design a traffic light or they want us to design a lock or uh, some other thing. So a statement of problem is one way we'll get, uh, we'll get this uh, request to us. The other one would be potentially someone will give us the function uh, that we need to work on. For example, function A, B, C and they might choose to give us a function which is a oops a not b c or a b not c or a b c not or a b c for example that's 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 could be the result of our solving a problem getting to this function as the output or they just simply give it to us and and eventually we need to reduce this function into a set of min term. We can go through a truth table to do it or simply uh, rewrite this thing as, and sometimes we can, as we get better at this with practice, you may not even have to do this explicit step. You just look at this thing and you know the min terms here are going to be min term three and this one is going to be min term three because this is zero one one and this is one zero one so it's a five and of course this is one one zero which is a six and seven so since we have three variable and we're going to use a k map to minimize it our k map will look something like this with two rows and let's go ahead and put a usually we start with the most significant here and continue on so A could be zero on the top row, one on the bottom row, and then we're gonna create four columns here, zero, 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 one, 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 and one, zero. So, so we know that this square is the square for min term zero, oops, min term zero, this is for min term one, this is for min term three, and notice we're using gray code up here, so we do jump back and forth and then this one is gonna be four, five, seven, and six. Now, so how we're gonna put this function in here, this function says that a min term three is a one, min term five is a one, min term six is a one, and min term seven is a one. All the ones that are not present in this product of some form we're gonna, go, I'm sorry, sum of product form. This is sum of product form, and this is the implicit form of it. And then this is gonna be zero, this is gonna be zero, this is gonna be zero, this is just so all the terms that are not one, as represented by the min term, will be zero. Now, the goal, the goal of, if you, if you remember from the earlier conversation, each one of these, um, boxes um, which are horizontally or vertically next to each other are neighbors. So zero and one are neighbor, four and five are neighbor, which means one variable is changing. And if you could combine it, we don't have to write that variable. So let's go ahead and so let's go ahead and do some definitions here before we go too far. So oops. so here are here are some definitions for us to think about. Implicit, um, the implicit is uh, actually in here, we're gonna use ones implement. There's a concept called zeros implement. We'll discuss it later on. But the ones implicant basically is telling us that every time you see a one, that is an implicant. So this is an implicant, this is an implicant, this is an implicant, and this is an implicant. That's fine for the, from, from a definition purposes, but as far as its value to us is not, not significant. Now, <clears throat> uh, the next one is prime implicant. So, so let's go ahead and see our goal is to be able to 
group these ones in such that horizontally and vertically the number of ones we're catching are powers of two remember in powers of two means two to the power of zero two to the power of one and two to the power of two for example in this case so we want these boxes we want these groupings to have horizontally either one box two box or four boxes the larger they are the smaller going to be the number of variables we end up in in our expression so if you look at here i can group these two together notice that if i group this together and then uh, notice i cannot group the three ones together because that's not a because then i'm going to have three threes not a power of two but I can go ahead and group these guys together and I can group these together. Now we're going to come up with the definition of a prime implicant. Prime implicant is an implicant that is not completely included in other implicants. Remember when I first draw the little um, circles around the ones? Uh, yes, they are implicants and the bigger ones are implicant also. But the bigger ones, like for example, if I take, if I were to take, if I were to take this one, this implicant, notice it's not completely included in either implicant, but the one that covers the six is. So the one that covering the six is an implicant, but the ones covering nine is implicant, but it's a special kind of implicant, it's a prime implicant. Okay. So that's a prime implicant. It's an implicant that's not fully covered. By another implicant. Essential implicant is really important. Essential implicant is a prime implicant by definition, is not covered by anything else. That, uh, that it has to be included in your expression because if you don't include it in your expression, uh, you are missing, you're not covering all the ones. So that's the answer. So, so for example, all three of these implicants, all three of these implicants are essential. Okay, um, because we are related. We do not have, and for this particular case, we do not have any optional prime implicants. Sometimes you have a prime implicant that other implicants will cover, and later on I'll do an example to have that in there, but for now we don't have any. And the last one is redundant. redundant. Those are prime implicants that we don't need because they were completely covered um, by some other implicants. Let me go back and redefine optional implicant. Optional implicant is you may have a choice of using one or the other. Both the optional implicant and the redundant um, prime implicants, we do not have it in here in this particular example. A later example, we're gonna make sure to have one for us to um, um, explore. Okay, so how do I do this? Well, you've got, an imp you've got one here. Um, so how do I write that? Well, that would be, so now I'm trying to do the minimum because I'm gonna write the biggest implicants I can find, and in this case, the biggest one is this one, which says A is one, notice is on the row that A is one, but when I look at the columns, C is zero and one, so really C I don't have to worry about, the only thing I have to write is A, B. So the green one gave me the prime implicant, let me use a different color. So if I use the black one to, to outline this one, Let's go ahead and make that the second one we write. The second one is basically going to say, look, A is 0 and 1. So it really doesn't matter which way I write it. So this could be a B and C because as long as B is 1 and C is 1, we are in the right location. Okay. And then finally, the last one remaining to cover all the remaining ones here. Uh, well, let's use red on that one. It would be... Basically, this is the only one left because I have this one I need to cover. And now I've got this term, which says A has to be 1. But when I look up here, B can be 0 or 1, so I don't have to write it. So see, now I have, this is the minimum function that I'm working with, okay? So, so we talked about implicants. Implicants being uh, anywhere you have a 1. Uh, or groups of one, there will be implicants. So there's lots of implicants. We really, implicants is just a basic definition. Prime implicant is important. Prime implicant are implicants that groups of ones that are not completely covered by another groups of one. 
Um, and then essential problems are the prime implicates we have to write in our minimum function because there are ones we have to cover. And then optional prime implicates is the implicates that we could use them or not use them because there's an alternative implicate that covers the ones. And then redundant or non-essential prime implicates are the ones that we really don't need. Okay. Um, so as, uh, as the name implies, you know, the, there are differences between all of these. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take this and do a little a more inter, uh, not interesting but more complex ones to, so we can get a little more variety on what the implicates could potentially look like. So let's go ahead and do this function. Somebody gave us an option uh, to request to minimize this function x, y, and z, and w, and they said this is a product of zero, one two three so these are all the min term remember this is the implicit form so three five six eight fourteen fifteen in here and they want us to minimize it so the first thing we do is go ahead and draw a four by four because it's got four variables so we gotta be able to have 16 possibilities in here so we're gonna draw our boxes and we're going to put x and y here z and w here okay and remember this is min term 0 goes in here min term 1 min term 3 min term 2 four five seven six and remember we jump here because these are gray code eight nine eleven ten twelve thirteen fifteen fourteen okay so now what we're going to do we're going to go up here and we're going to try to put everywhere we have a min term that means we have a one so we're going to have a one here we're going to have a one here one here and one here one two three Five and six have a one in them. Um, then uh, eight has one in it. Fourteen has one in it, and fifteen has one in it. Okay, so these are where the ones are, which means everywhere else we got zeros. Okay, now remember the implicates. How many implicants? We have got lots of implicants. You know, this is an implicant, 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 and then groupings and all that. So there's probably many, many implicants, well over probably 15 implicants in here. So, but that's not really what I'm interested. We want to find prime implicants. Prime implicants are the groupings of ones that are not completely covered in the other one so basically we're looking for the biggest groups of one and remember the dimension horizontally and vertically must be powers of two one two four okay so let's go ahead and group them the best we can and i'm going to use a red so here is one okay so and let's let's i'm just to so you i remember this is prime implicant one is that a prime implicant because nothing else can cover as much of it? What's another one? Another prime implicant is this one. See that? Another prime implicant is this one. Um, and is there any other one? Well, the, this is another one. That's a prime implicant. Is there any other one? Well, you have a temptation to do this prime implicant, but that's really not. It's, it is you can it's, it's an implicant but it's not a prime because remember this is neighbor of this so you kind of think about these things wrap so these two go together so prime so we got i marked that one but you know stop marking them so you got prime implicant one prime implicant two prime implicant three prime implicant four are there any other prime implicants or implicants in there well, there are lots more implicants, so we're not going to worry about it, but the prime implicants, 
there is one more do you see that do you want to take a look while i change pin notice this because that is a prime implicant because not a single grouping of one is covering both of those ones so so you could think of that as a so now remember what that would be that potentially could be an optional prime implicant because you can either cover that this will cover the one on the top you can either use p2 to cover this one or you can use p5 to cover prime implicant 5 to cover it okay and then the last one is bigger this prime implicant 6 i forgot to label it okay now the question is how many of these are essential prime implicants um, so we have quite a few of them are pri essential prime implicant for example this big one is a prime prime uh, in prime in prime implicant one is essential because it has it's the only one that covers the three and i'm in turn three so i have to write p1 and if you're going to write the p1 let's take a look at what that so function x y and z and w is so my if i write the prime implicant one that's just simply is x not y not why because it really doesn't care what the value of zw is is always one under these cases take a look at p2 now i'm going to wait and not write p2 and p3 till later on let's write all the essential prime implicants so this would be another essential because nobody else is covering no other prime implicant is covering five so i have to write this if you look at this thing you'll see that x has to be zero but y can change so i'm going to say x not then i look over here it has to be in this column which then means z has to be not because it's zero and omega okay all right now let's go p4 p4 is again essential because it's the only one that covers this one but the prime implicant is over here and over here which means y has to be zero but x doesn't matter so we're going to have y not and has to be in that first column so z not w not or and then let's see if we cover so we cover p4 we covered uh, the only one, oh, P6. P6 is essential because it has to cover this one. So we have to write P6 as well. So as you notice, we go ahead and write all the prime, essential prime implicants, and then come and deal with the other one. So X and Y is one. And then you look over here and you've got Z because W can be one or zero. So it doesn't matter. Now we have a choice. So there are two possible solutions for this particular one I can choose this is the last one I have to cover that's the only one that has not been covered with other prime implicant so I can basically have two solution one potential solution with p2 which gives me um, x which is x naught and y I'm sorry z w naught the upper one p2 or I can cover it or I can cover it with P5, which would be again X. Uh, this time it's going to be Y, Z, W, not. Right? So I have two equations here. So now we got a kind of a uh, um, overview of the various implicants. Okay? So, so that's, that brings us to the end of this introduction. Um, of kmap uh, and all the various implicants and then the fact that we really would like to get the biggest implicants we can so we want to find the prime implicants and then out of the prime implicants first we write all the essential one and then one on the optional side we decide you know, which one we want to write and on the redundance one we never use them because they are redundant